Look, all the other ones will have like an entrance. This one has like a bunch of vertical sticks stacked up right next to the entrances. Seems very uh, much more like, hey, this is a door. See, like, that's a that's a pack rat nest. Yeah, exactly. And it's like these that that's like where the tree is. There's like a hole. Look, there. yeah, there's candy at the entrance. Oh, that's probably them coming up here and trying to bait them. Honestly, um, what the heck? Yeah, well, and that, that's like of, Smarties in there. The little one of nest. The, the lures is that that you're supposed to give them like treats. This is the weird one though. Okay. Because that door is much more distinguished than any of the other holes on any of the other nests. And uh, I don't know. It just it seems really weird that they're. It is such a defined doorway, as opposed to all the other ones where it's just like a random hole somewhere on it that a rat can climb in through. Um, so you think it's got like little pillars and stuff exactly. leaning up against it? It, it like... just seems more intelligently designed than what a rat would do. Now there are uh, rats and nests in this area that make like really intricate structures. They're like brown-footed wood rats or okay, something. Wait, let me point something out here real quick. Huh. You think? Okay, but that, that doorway is a tree. That, Correct. That, what about the hole there? Yeah, to me, that, that doorway looks legit. Okay, but that, that's part of the tree. That's part point. of the tree. Got a point. But, and then, like, like this hole there, it's just a hole. There's what no. About this? It's just a hole. There, there's no. That's for ventilation. Yeah, there, there's no, like, design to make it look like a door. That looks like a fucking door. Like, they, they, these look like somewhere where a rat could fucking just crawl through. And, like, this one, how this one here. But then this is the one that has the porch, and that's an, uh, Yeah, that one has like a porch with an I awning on it. I don't know if that's a normal design. I haven't found any other ones that I've ever seen online that have like a fucking porch. But it's got like... It's got, it's got more, that one has candy in front of it too. Like that. Yeah. Who is feeding the duende, man? It's, I have, it's probably really people <laughs> living out here. But like it's Fucking got like pillars... Feeding the stuff. duende. Well, what about that, Riley? Right? Like, look behind you over there. Yeah, that's part of the, uh, uh, the, the, the lore of the Duende, that you're oh, yeah. supposed to give them treats, they like fruits and candies, and it keeps them happy. Um, maybe we're just feeding the wood rat population, but... <laughs> well, they're not, honestly, they're not eating the candy. Well, okay, but that, that's one of the other things, is that they have eaten some of the candy, but not all of it. Because I came up here with two of the people that Sal, and, that Sal told me about that were really into this, and they brought candy with them. And uh, I put a bunch of candy right there in front of that where I was looking for, I like stacked it up on candy. Well, these pack rats, they collect shiny things, uh -huh. like arrowheads and coins. Oh, so did they take all the chocolate and not the porch? Keys, they'll take your car keys, they'll take your pocket knife, and then they have a little treasure trove inside. That's, That's why they call them a pack rat. Something like that I could see being the reason for these legends and stuff. Duende. Weird things like the braid, and like, I don't know, it just seems like, and especially this tree too. This tree It's feels, a cool tree. Yeah, it feels more, uh, I know it sounds silly, but more mystical. The tree does have some awesome energy about it. Look at it twisting together like that. It's three all y'all. Three is the mystical number. And the fact that it has three large trunks rising out of the ground together, and that's the one that has the weird doorway on it. Like, I don't know. It's it's just kind of odd. It's a bunch of little weird things that alone, I would not have second, I would not have had a second thought about that. But that so alone. So the duende don't like smart, huh? Uh, well, they, well, they like, like some, some but. Yeah. But, but and, and so that's what I mean. We're like, I feel like if it was a rat, it would have taken all of the candy, whereas it's only taken some of the candy. I don't know, maybe they just don't like Smarties that much and they only wanted a few of them, but I would just have thought that as an animal, when you find something that's edible, you're like, I'm gonna take as much of that as I can. I'm not gonna leave food in there because I only wanted four of them because I'm watching my Duende waistline. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, yeah, and the, the, the braids are definitely the most significant thing to me because that's one that I can experiment and try to so do. So where myself. do you think these duende come from? Here? Uh, like, like originally? Right there in that nest. Um, Didn't I, you just I, hear what he was saying? <laughs> are they coming from a different dimension? Uh, are they magic? What are they? What do they look like? What, what, what do you think these things are? That's a complete guess. I, I don't genuinely know. Um, I, I think that it's going to be something kind of similar to what like Bigfoot is. I don't think it's that hard to believe that it's maybe some kind of subhuman species. A little miniature that hominid. Has, that has been intelligent enough to see that when it's around us, we fucking kill it. I That's my whole theory with So Bigfoot you think it's too. from Earth? You think it's I a do. physical I, creature from I Earth? I do. I think it's a natural... What about foot tracks? Uh, 
I, they're very small. I, you, you don't see... So is a fucking rat. You can find their tracks. You don't see bobcat footprints, and we know yes, bobcats. You do. I have never seen I've bobcat seen them up on Yeah, I can point those out to yeah, you. definitely. Okay, I, I'd love to see that. Uh, just because I've never seen any. So I, I just, in my mind, it doesn't make it that hard to imagine that if these things are even moderately intelligent, they know to avoid us at all costs. Because that's what my whole theory but about they big... fuck with our horses. I don't think they fuck with them. How do you think they dispose of their dead? That's always a big question. Because I know the Sasquatch, it's hard to find a skeleton. Yeah. But there's lots of people that have reports of seeing them and interacting with them. Uh-huh. There's got to be a way that they dispose of their dead, whether they're cannibalizing them or... Something. I, I, disposing I, of them, scattering I, them somewhere. I, I don't know, honestly. I mean, is it that crazy to think they might bury them? I, I think that that's a that's a very uh, like basic. I would. Think. Well, the thing about burying them is you'd cu- you'd run across the skeletons eventually if that's if they're an ancient species that's been doing that for a long time. I just I mean if this thing is this big, that's a much smaller skeleton find. If we haven't found any Bigfoot skeletons. Do you think something that big lives in that hole? No. no I, I, I don't know. I think they can only be about this big, right? It's gonna be about the size of a wood rat to blend yeah. in with the wood rats. Maybe they're like Santa Claus and they like shrink down. They can <laughs> they go through the gym change day. their shape. Um, I, I, there's a quote I really like that science or magic is just science we do not yet understand. It's true. That's if you, true. If you look at what a phone is and you brought that back a hundred years, they would think you're a fucking wizard. Like, mm-hmm. it, and that's just technology. So I, I, I maybe they have some uh, shrink ray. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's it's literally all a guess. All I know is that I cannot braid the horse's hair like that, and I would pay anybody I met. Fifty dollars to get in to a horse pen and make braids that look like that by hand on video. I, I would, I'd shut up. But it's like I, I've I've been in there and I've tried to do it and I can't get it. And I'm being I'm trying to be very patient and like calm the horse while I'm doing it. And they just won't stand still. Mm-hmm. They, they don't let you just play with their mane. Um, and so the whole theory of like, oh, it's just some random fucking horse girl who's coming up here in the dark when no one's up there <laughs> to hop in the pen and calmly get the horse to let it braid their hair. And she's not even that good at it. And it's like a shitty, messy braid. I think it doesn't, if it was, if it was a perfect little fishtail or something, yeah, I would agree with it. I'd be like, oh, fuck yeah, that's a person coming in. But it's like, it looks animalistic almost. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I genuinely have no idea. It's just a bunch of weird little things that I can't explain. And the fact that both Sal and Bartolo are like harping about this. And then all the research I do online is it's not just them making shit up. Like the stuff they've told me is everything I can find online as well. And there are many cultures that have talked about these things for a long time all over the world that don't talk to each other about this. That to me is more of a sign of that there is something like this out there that no one can really explain as opposed to it's some tricksters that are doing the same thing all over the planet separately having the same ideas. Um, well, I notice that there are some rocks that are above the duff. So on multiple rat nests here. Mm-hmm, there's one there. And I don't know if that's because heavy foot traffic going through there. I don't know either. I really don't. There's a little bedding spot. Underneath the fork of that little flat spot. Uh Why would they bed right there? Uh, Well, that would be, I would think it would be another animal. It could be a little animal Uh, there, like a little bobcat or something. Because if there's wood rats and stuff or duende coming in and out, that would be a key spot where you'd want to post up if you were a Yeah, why haven't we seen a fucking bobcat wrecking one of these things? Because I think they coexist with them. I genuinely Maybe think that, that they're that. they're Maybe they're more intelligent. I and mean, we have pet tigers and yeah, stuff. They're, so. they're more intelligent than just an animal, and I think that the animal <laughs> community recognizes. It. Yeah. Uh, that's the same reason the horses don't buck them off and fucking stomp them out. Well, and find, like, okay. A okay. Let me let me put a hole in that <laughs> argument. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Mountain lions. Uh huh. We are definitely more intelligent than mountain lions, and they yeah. definitely know it. Uh huh. But they'll still fuck a child up because they can. And right. A bobcat could fuck up a wood rat. Yeah, bullfrog will eat a bird. Right. That's true. I don't know. And then, then maybe the only re- rebuttal to that would be, a, like, maybe they are in some weird way kind of magic then. And I know that's, like, a, a something that's, you know, our modern scientific ho- minds, like, really hard to, like, even, like, theoretically accept. But, like, look at all the animals that we have tamed or have been chill with that normally would fuck us up in nature. I think that it's it may, maybe they have just figured out how to uh, I don't know fucking make offering to the bobcat or something like that or may, maybe in a situation like that where a bobcat attacks one of them 
they're more vicious than we would let on. Maybe they have some kind of idea of tool construction, even if it's little. Then where are the tools? I don't know, with their other shiny things that they have. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's one of those, maybe they're making them out of natural products, things that biodegrade and decompose or something like that. Um, broken bottle glass. Broken bottle glass. Yeah, th things that wouldn't be necessarily like, oh, look at these fucking tiny plastic knives we found in this rat's nest. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I really don't. And I know that I may be totally wrong, but I just think it's, they're weird things I want. Yeah, I have an open mind about stuff. Yeah. Because I, 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 I just like, what makes me believe this so much is my prior beliefs about Sasquatch and Bigfoot. Because I really think that that is an offshoot of a subhuman species or above human species, something like Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus is a, a well-known, well-documented, real animal that existed in the Ice Age. It was between 8 and 10 feet tall. It was a bipedal ape that was native to like China, Himalaya area. It's one of the theories for that's where the Yeti comes from. Um, there are definitely signs of culture and society in monkeys now. And I think that if something was much larger or even semi-similar to our size and had a large brain over 10, 12,000 years... Well, like, there used to be multiple different species of hominid. Yeah. Well, and then they were all extinct they're, except they're all, for us. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows Neanderthals. But a lot of people don't know of Denisovans, which are another... Neanderthals species. are still with us. Yeah, well, we have Neanderthal DNA in us. That's they, it. They, we also have Homo erectus there, DNA. There's another yeah. one that's, uh, I like, I can't remember what it's called, but it's native to, like, the South Pacific. And all of the fossil stuff we found of them, they're on average between three and five feet tall. Homo fluorescent. Uh, Homo fluorescent, yeah, uh -huh, that's it. Uh huh. They have a skeleton in uh, uh, the Museum of Natural History in, I think it's in D.C. Okay. I saw it. And it, well, and that, that's the thing, it's like, we know of those, so I don't mm -hmm. think it's that far of uh, an argument to make that, that that could be what Sasquatch is, that it's some kind of other almost human species okay. that mm -hmm. has acknowledged our existence and knows that like if if it goes near us we're gonna fucking kill it think about all of its interactions with humans for the last two to three hundred years all of our time here in america as civilized people we killed everything like buffalo uh bears wolves everything we're just fucking killing it all so if they're moderately intelligent and they're good at hunting and being aware of their surroundings like most apes, I feel like, really are. They're going to be like, oh, we need to stay the fuck away from those guys because they have those things that make a loud noise and then you drop dead. Well, they're um, tribal and we use language to coordinate and make plans. Well, and, and that's another and A lot thing. of other animals it, it, do that, but not to the extent there, we there's do. There's a, uh, a really good little documentary about this these guys that went camping up in the Sierras. It's called mm -hmm. the Sierra Sounds Recording. And it's like four dudes that have this camp spot that's like nine miles from the nearest trail. They've been hunting there for a long time. It, you have to ride there by horseback. They went up one time and heard all these crazy fucking noises. So they came back with a recording device. And this is in like 1970-something. And it's one of the best uh, like pieces of evidence for the argument that Bigfoot or Sasquatch has some kind of a language. Because in the recording, you can hear the guys like trying to shut each other so you can hear it and it sounds like someone just speaking gibberish but then you hear another voice also speaking gibberish and they sound like they're communicating and it's not just like animal voices. it's like a weird yeah but they had a linguist translate all that and find out that it's actually a language uh, well, and, but it's not did you hear that like a language it's like a hodgepodge it has like words and syllables that sound like mandarin and certain words and syllables that sound almost like russian um and then even like in the frequencies in the audio, mm -hmm. they go lower and higher, both lower and mm -hmm. higher than what the human voice can do. So a human physically would not be able to make these noises. So either they're teaching some kind of animal how to fucking half-ass speak Chinese and Russian, or there was some kind of intelligent large ape that was native to South China that probably migrated right over with everybody else right around that same time. Because if you take an archaeology class, they say that life and humanity, or humans, were seeded in North America by crossing the Bering Land Strait and coming down through North America and then South America. Right. I don't think that's true. Well, that's one I, I one that's, route that they probably took, but not we, the only route. I think that we probably had boats before then. Oh, yeah. But a yeah. species that doesn't have boats, that is much more adept to being in nature all the time, constantly and surviving as they go, it wouldn't be a hard trip for them to come around like that and populate the dense forests of... Russia and then the top part of Canada and coming down. And 
I think they probably just stayed in North America. That's why there's not a lot of legends going down in South America. I don't think they would have had well, have, you, have you heard uh, the like cultural resilience, like the, the tale telling resilience theory of that? Like, where it's just it's a, uh, a figment of our collective imagination because it didn't exist. <laughs> So kind of like a Mandela effect type thing, where it's sort just of. sort of. I've heard of the um, concept well, of. I, I, in my opinion, that, I think dragons were real at some point too, because there are so many cultures all over the world mm -hmm. that have very, very in-depth legends specifically about dragons and about flying lizards, and like, it makes a lot more sense that instead of we all just came up with this bullshit story at the same time talking about these crazy fucking things, I think it makes a lot more sense that there was probably something like that way 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 in the past and the legends of our interactions with that have been passed down through word of mouth and I have mean, you heard of all the the nepalese tribesmen who will like say there's yeti there's yeti and they'll take like western hikers out mm -hmm. and it's bears yes i have, have heard, heard that, that. <laughs> I, I have heard of that and i know that there's a lot of times where like Bears can walk bipedal for a long distance, mm -hmm. especially if they had an injured forehand or something like that. They can walk on their feet for a long ways. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's also a lot of clips I've seen where it's like, you can fucking see that it's not a bear moving. Or, like, things where it's like, there was one, it was out in, I want to say it was, like, Yosemite or something. Mm -hmm. And someone's recording, and you can see the road kind of going off to right in front of them. And then there's, like, this big open plain and, like, a small, like, almost cliffside kind of thing and a bunch of trees on the top. And there are a bunch of trees that are being, like, shaken. Like, just a few specific trees that look like they're being, like, fucking moved. A bear could definitely do that. But then, those trees that are shaking are uprooted out of the ground and moved. And it's like, I don't care what kind of fucking bear you show me. I don't know any bear that can rip an entire pine tree out of the ground and then carry it upright while they're walking around. Like, if it was just, like, a tree that fell over... I mean, oh yeah, a bear, a bear could definitely knock something over. Would that even be feasibly possible for a large ape? Um, I don't know. But that's another thing. We don't know how strong these things are. Think about, like... They're about the, the size of a gorilla. The reports I hear is that I they have a four foot wide at the chest. Four foot. And, and they're like nine to ten feet tall. I, I'm... This is maybe a foot and a half, maybe two feet on a big dude. Four feet wide is fucking massive. And think about the stories of, like... Uh, women who see their car get or their kid get hit by a car and then they lift the car up when they're pumped full of adrenaline mm -hmm. and the kid climbs out. That is a small, not physically fit woman lifting several thousand pounds off her child with adrenaline. So something that's twice the size of that that is constantly its entire life using all of its body to do very physical tasks all the time. I don't think it's that hard. Well, to it's imagine. like the when you multiply the size of a circle by twice. Mm -hmm you increase its volume by four times. Yes, exactly. So, like if um, my four-year-olds, if they want to pick up a gallon of milk, mm -hmm. they're going to struggle, mm -hmm. even though they're already half my size mm -hmm. in height. But I could pick up way more weight. I could way more weight than they can. Yeah. Exponentially more. Exponentially more. and, and Probably a hundred times more weight than they can pick up. And, and I'm I mean, only twice the, their height. The Think about the difference of like you know? the, the muscle makeup of a modern day domestic cow versus a non -domestic. Like a longhorn out in the uh, Texas heat. Texas. Or yeah. an elk or something mm -hmm. like that. They're 100% muscle. There is almost no fat on them other than the fat they use for warmth. Because they're literally moving and running all the time constantly what do you think about giants building the pyramids and stuff um, like that th that's another good theory i've heard from it just because it i don't genuinely know how we would move 200 million blocks over 500 miles when the smallest of those blocks weighs several tons number one how would, would, how would geopolymer some people are saying that they're geopolymer now they're like a type of cement the great the great pyramid of Giza. That's one pyramid, though. There's three pyramids in that selection, and there are hundreds of pyramids around Egypt, all in different, like, fashions of building. And they would have to take down a mountain yeah. to and, quarry out all those rocks. And how did they move those rocks, or, or cut the rocks? Because even if they are uh, a, a cement or something, I don't think they're a cement, because I, I know that they've done, like, really in-depth geological, like, examinations of the stones, and a lot of the times they're granite and limestone. Limestone's not not as strong. Granite's one of the densest, hardest materials mm -hmm. that naturally occurs in the planet. And the fact that we cut it today with hydraulic pressure, pressurized water and sand mixed together, they could have made something like that, but... Diamond have, bit technology. To have the constant 
flow of water that would cut through even two million blocks. It, it takes... <laughs> well, I got the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, look at how much water it takes to cut a granite slab for a countertop. Mm -hmm. it, like, it's a lot of water. And that's in a system where they're shooting it straight down onto the block, and it's going into a drain, and they're recycling that water mm -hmm. back up into it. It uses a lot of water. Um, it, it's things like that where it's like, I don't know how they did it. I don't know if I'd necessarily say that it was giants. Um, but I, it, like, I don't know. Oh, here, but they'll me. Hey there, Bartolo, you gotta go 